If you ask any little kid what they think about fishing, they will envision themselves casting their line. The line might have a hook, a bobber, or a bright shiny lure at the end of it. There could be nothing at the end of it. They watch their mom or dad casting from a boat, or a dock, or an island. There is a sort of rite of passage there, growing up from a line and bobber, that just floats there to casting your line and reeling in a fish. It gives you something to do while waiting for the fish to bite. And once you discover the incredible array of lures to choose from, it gives you something new and exciting to collect. When I finally learned to cast, I was so excited. I was still a young kid. At first, my dad allowed me to try his fishing rod. He showed me how to properly hold it, the correct form to cast off, and how to reel it in a way that would entice the fish to bite. Once I understood how to cast, I practiced every chance I got. Finally, Mom and Dad decided that it was about time to have a fishing rod all of my own. That is a big deal in the life of any kid who likes to be outside and wants to fish. We went to the store with my favorite Aunt Bibi. We looked at all the different rods. I made my selection. The rod came with two little lures, as well as some hooks, weights, and bobbers. I didn't think that I would be using those. I had my eyes on the wall of more interesting lures. Some looked like fish. Some looked like little frogs. Some looked like bugs. Some had feathers, spinners, beads, and even sparklers. Some were oddly shaped, but had cool names like Daredevil. Some were brightly colored. Some were plain silver and gray. What to choose? I was allowed to select three. Ernesto was upset that she wasn't getting a rod. Aunt Bibi suggested I get four lures if I let Ernesto choose one. That sounded good. I mean, it would still be mine. I chose a red daredevil with a bright blue stripe and jointed wiggly fish and one with feathers and a spinner. Ernesto chose a bright pink, orange, and blue fish shaped thing with three hooks. I had to admit, it was pretty cool. Bibi got me one more that looked like a little frog. At the lake, I went down to the dock and began to practice with my new rod. I wanted to get the hang of it. And besides, Daddy did tell me to practice. I tried each lure out. I noticed that each one moved differently. The daredevil twirled around as it moved through the water. The spinner actually spun around like a tiny propeller in the water. The wiggly fish squiggled around like a real little fish. Aunt Bibi's lure floated on the top of the water until I started to reel it in, and then it moved up and down from the surface. When I tried Ernesto's lure, I noticed that it was a bit heavier than the others, and that when I cast, it went way farther than the others. When I reeled it in, it felt a little heavier and moved all over, up and down and side to side. Okay, Ernesto had great taste in fishing lures. I also learned that fish were not the only things that lures could catch. I can't tell you how many times I thought I had a fish and it was some lake grass or some sticks or a leaf. Mom and BB called them stick fish, but I kept at it. Every free minute, I ran down to the dock and practiced with the hope that this cast might bring me in a fish. I also found that Ernesto's lure was my favorite, and so naturally, I used that one the most. Oops. I cast off, and the lure landed on a nearby tree branch. After a few jerks, I was fine, and I went back to practicing, and still hoping for a fish. I cast out, reeled in, cast out, reeled in, cast out, reeled in. I kind of fell into a rhythm. Then I swum back to cast, and the lure didn't land. Ouch, someone said. I didn't think anything about it. The lure must have been stuck in a tree again. Not thinking, I jerked the rod the way I had done earlier. Jason! It was Bibi. Hold on a second. I turned around and looked at Bibi. The lure was stuck in her ear. I didn't even know she was near me. Without thinking, I pulled the rod. Okay, Jay, stop. Bibi said. Jason! Daddy was running over. He looked at Bibi and was both concerned and laughing. Bibi put her hands up to her ear and fiddled with it for a moment. Then, Can you get me some scissors? To my dad. Dad handed her a pair of mini scissors, and she clipped the line. Then she went into the bathroom with Mom, running after her. Oh no, I had hurt my favorite aunt. Was she going to have to have her ear removed? While Bibi was in with my mom, Daddy took the fishing pole from me and put it back in the boathouse. Then he sat down with me. 
I had come to know the sit-down conversations were serious ones. They usually took place when I had done something wrong. I knew that I had done something wrong, and if I hadn't known already, I would be able to tell by looking at Daddy's face. I decided to head him off. Dad, it was an accident, I said. I know, Dad said, in that voice that means he is working on being calm and rational. But it happened because you weren't paying attention, and poor Aunt Bibi paid the price. It was an accident, I repeated. It was true. I couldn't think of anything else to say. I was worried that I had permanently damaged poor Bibi and that Daddy might take away my fishing rod. Jason, I know that it might not seem like it, Dad said, but a fishing rod can be very dangerous. Bibi was lucky it caught in her ear instead of her eye. That was a good point. I know, I said. It is very important to be aware of your surroundings. This is a big responsibility. Casting isn't just throwing the lure around willy-nilly. You have to be careful. I understand, I said. Now, let's go check on your aunt, Dad said. That scared me. What would I say? As we walked into the bathroom, I noticed Ernesto looking upset. Then I saw my mom with pliers, wire clippers, a bottle of alcohol, and bandages. She was working on Aunt Bibi's ear. As I watched, Mom clipped one of the hooks and removed it through Bibi's ear. The two other hooks were still in there. I was scared. What if Bibi didn't love me anymore? She was my favorite aunt. Still is. Bibi looked over at me and smiled. Hi, buddy, she said. I'm so sorry, I said, feeling my eyes watering up again. I'm going to be fine, Bibi said, still smiling. Your mom is an excellent surgeon. I thought mom was a journalist. Are you really going to be okay? I asked, as mom put the next hook extracted from Bibi's ear on the sink. I was also aware that Daddy was standing with his arms crossed. I am, Bibi said. I am going to be great. Mom only has one more hook to take out, and I will be all fixed up. Mommy took out the last hook. Wow, they were really stuck in her ears. They had gone straight through. Bibi got up and walked over to me. Then she gave me a big hug. It's all good, buddy, she said. Aunt Bibi's okay? Ernesto asked. Of course I am, Bibi said. Ernesto nodded and looked over at the sink. My lure is broken, Ernesto said. We'll get you a new one, Dad said, shaking his head and rolling his eyes. That was my first lesson in forgiveness. Real forgiveness, not the kind that you need when you spill something or break a glass. Bibi forgave me for really hurting her. Instead of being angry with me, she gave me a great big hug and took Ernesto and me out for ice cream afterward. I learned that when we love someone, we forgive any stupid mistakes that person might make, the way Bibi forgave me. I also understood that Bibi was teaching me to be forgiving of mistakes that other people might make in the future. I will say that it felt good to be forgiven. Hey, thank you for watching. Please click on the right to subscribe if you like the video. And please don't forget to click on the bell icon when you subscribe so that you can be notified when we upload a new video. Watch more videos on the left, including our playlist. Thank you.